Just bought a watermelon at this uh, corner store with a lot of great fruit in addition to a passion fruit. Met a very nice salesman who speaks good English who of course wants to take a picture with me because uh, if you're from America you're essentially a celebrity here. Uh, and, and look, he's got a tattoo. Let's see it. What is your name? Young Yuni. Young Yuni. Yes. I am Jackson. Jackson. Nice Jackson. to meet you. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. This looks like a nice place to shoot a mukbang right by the river in this little park. I got a nice big watermelon right here. It's also super heavy, which I think is a good sign. It sounds good. Excited to eat that. And I also bought this little packet of passion fruit. If you don't know, watermelon and passion fruit, it's like peanut butter and jelly. It's like, it's the greatest combination ever. And I will cut some of it, although it won't go all the way through, and then I'll kind of just drop it on the ground lightly, and it'll make a nice cut in half. Oh. Let me bless up this melon. Thank you, China, for being a country that is abundant in fruits. I have to say it is pretty expensive here in China, but I've been getting free breakfast every morning because I'm staying at a hotel on this film set, you guys know, and we get free breakfast. Uh, but thank you for being abundant in fruits. They are sweet, they are beautiful. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be safe in this country and meet lovely, nice people. I love rice, I love vegetables, I love fruits. You have lots of that, you have mountains. I feel very blessed to be here and grateful. Thank you to the Chinese soil that produced this melon that looks absolutely gorgeous. I love you, amen. Let's eat. So, I've been in China now, I think two weeks, but to be totally honest, time is like, mm, that's good. Time is like really weird right now because I'm working so freaking hard. My days are just like wake up, get some food in me, go to work, work for 14 hours, hauling equipment, super physical stuff, and then I go to bed. And I wake up and I do it all again. And I don't even have the time or energy to like know how many days I've been here. It's just crazy, I'm exhausted to be quite honest. Oh yeah. Super sugary. type of thing like I did with Banana Island when I get back home and uh, I'm definitely gonna do it but I'm trying to think when I think the time I would do it would be like the last week of June at early July so if you want to do that with me I'll cap it at like 15 or 20 people but hopefully you can join me on that if you love watermelon and want to eat only watermelon for a week be a great cleanse. There's nothing like hydrating, sweet watermelon. And I think if I did Watermelon Island, I legitimate, legitimately would not drink water for a week. You just don't need to. You get more than enough from watermelon. So that would be pretty cool to experience like not eating water for a week. Damn. That'd be rad. It's like a weird thing to experience. I'm right from in like the start of what they call the old city in Dujong Yan. See a little view of a temple on a mountain. That guy that I met who sold me this watermelon was really funny. 
it was very like what I've noticed is when you like buy something from a Chinese person who's like interested that you're from America it's such a exciting event for them that they don't leave you alone he was like touching me way too much like grabbing me uh, asking me oh damn it whatever few second rule eating watermelon off the ground in a city park in China it's all about eating clean and living dirty those healthy microbes build your gut bacteria um, but yeah they're so like obsessed that you're talking to them and hanging out with them and he was just like he was really funny but yeah he was just like grabbing me taking pictures with me um, and it's crazy man like being American having money having access to the internet having a good education all these privileges that are so easy to take for granted when you meet people here who just the average person on the street working at a fruit stand most likely has a pretty low education level probably makes I don't know maybe makes a thousand dollars a month maybe not that's probably pretty good for most people it's just like wow you realize how much privilege you have simply because you were born into a culture and society like America that values education you know we still have a lot of work to do on that but values education the right to education at least more than in most countries most developing countries I should say and like access to the internet man I mean people here can't go on YouTube or Facebook without breaking the law technically and getting a VPN so that's why traveling it's so healthy for it, it's so healthy because it makes you realize your privilege you no longer take it for granted This watermelon is so awesome. The only thing that would make it better is if it was cold. Oh my god, my passion fruit. Thankfully, I did not forget until the end. Hmm. Where are you, passion fruits? I wonder where these come from. But as with everything in China, there's no English writing. That's a crazy thing. Like when you travel to Thailand, all the packaged goods are like in Thai and also in English. And everyone speaks like broken English. Actually, the guy that sold the watermelon to me, that kid, spoke really good English. But here in China, none of the packaged goods have English. Oh, this passion fruit looks good. Oh, baby. Ah. Oh, <laughs> yes. I'm going to pour this. Oh, my God. Too freaking good. You just scrape all that goodness out onto your melon. And you are a happy person in life. that all spread around. Oh yeah. Ooh. So I'm uh, I realize
this, you know, this movie that I'm working for. Oh yeah, let, let me let me tell you a bit about how that's been. It's been amazing. I've learned so much. Uh, first, let me tell you if you don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm here in China because I got a job totally unplantriotic related, but as a uh, just an assistant, production assistant, camera assistant on on a documentary film shoot. Um, that you know, I knew the guy who's the director, and they needed some PAs. Essentially, it means you just take orders for the filmmakers. Help me put in these batteries. Go take this case of lenses to that guy over there. General production assistant stuff. And it's been really great. It's been really fun. I've learned, I can't tell you how much I've learned. We're working 12 to 14 hours a day, six days a week. Today's my day off. It is insane work, you guys. I had no idea what it takes to put a movie together. And this isn't even like, yeah, it's gonna be in the theaters. This is like a legit movie. But it's not a huge budget movie compared to like a big Hollywood movie. So this isn't even anything intense. And the intensity level compared to anything I'm used to filming videos is just off the charts. So it's really given me a whole new perspective on watching movies, filmmaking. You know, there's a lot of work. There's an insane amount of moving pieces that the producers and directors have to orchestrate. It's wild. Um, we have about, I would say 30 to 40 people on any given day on the crew. About maybe 10 of us are American. A couple Canadians, a couple people from the UK, and then everyone else is uh, just like Chinese crew. Translators, um, grips, which means like the guys that operate the tripods and the cranes and a lot of the construction and mechanical work. And you know, we just hired a Chinese production company crew to help us out with all that stuff. It's a lot of just young Chinese guys that don't speak English, so we just communicate through, you know, facial expressions. There's so much water in this, I gotta, gotta take a drink. Mm. get to see a panda in their life. I mean, you could see one in a zoo, sure. All right, here's some dudes walking behind me, seeing what I'm doing, staring at me like a weirdo. I'm a white dude eating a watermelon in these people's towns. They're like, what is happening in the world? Because of the apocalypse. Um, yeah, most people never get to see a panda in a natural setting authentically doing its thing. And I get to see that every single day. It's insane. 
They're amazing creatures. Um, the caricature that you hear of pandas in the movies, like they're fat and they just sit all sit around all day eating bamboo with their big bellies out. It's actually real. The way that they like sit on their butt, like a person just like sit down with their chest up and they just have a big pile of food and they just like slouch and just eat their bamboo. It's amazing. The other day, there was one by this like kind of watering pool type of pond thing and it just got in there and it sat in it like a human sits on the bench of a jacuzzi and put its arms out on the sides and was doing this, putting water on its chest. They're like little human puppy bear things. Absolutely amazing. So I can't wait for you guys to see the movie. It'll come out in like a year. And I'll make sure to tell you about it obviously when it comes out. All right, this half is about finished. Oh. Now for the second half. is always the sweetest part. I think I'm going to pick up a durian today and do a durian mukbang for dinner. Maybe keep it raw today. I've been eating a lot of rice and and sautéed oily vegetables every day. So it feels really good. Eat a lot of fruit. Fruit here is expensive. I'm getting paid to be here in China. I don't have to pay for my flights. Didn't pay for my hotel room, etc., etc. Because I'm I'm being employed. I'm staff on a movie. So, everything's taken care of. So I feel totally good. I'm buying as much fruit as I want on my days off because I go days here without spending a dime because everything's taken care of. Which is amazing, super grateful. Um, but this large watermelon was about nine dollars is that right it was 55 yuan and there's uh six yuan is a dollar so yeah it was like nine bucks which is not that not cheap in thailand this would be like one or two dollars um, is China good for vegans? I would say yes. Because even though the fruit's not the cheapest in the world, it's everywhere though. If you're able to. And it's cheaper in some places. But. <clears throat> There's tons of fruit everywhere. There's rice everywhere you go. There's noodles everywhere you go. And there's vegetables everywhere you go. They do eat meat here, for sure. Not like it's meat-free at all. 
and a lot of the young, younger people are eating way more meat and processed foods and thus are way fatter than the older people here, but I would say it's very easy to eat vegan in China. Um, it really is an interesting observation that a lot of the older people here are super lean and they eat their rice and a little bit of fish or but mainly just like rice and vegetables and like all the young guys from the bigger cities that are working on our film crew that are Chinese are chubby or fat and it's because they're eating pizza and KFC and more meat than the older generation. And everyone smokes cigarettes here. I asked my friend Joy, who's uh, on the Chinese crew here, who speaks really good English, and she said about 90% of men in China smoke cigarettes. Her observation. Isn't that insane? How in 2017, the vast majority of the males in a huge country with over a billion people smoke cancer sticks. It's incredible. Mind blowing. Just as incredible that people still eat meat in America and elsewhere, considering, according to the uh, Center for Disease Control, processed meat is a level one carcinogen. But who has time to know that? watermelon. So heavy. So I'll close down this mukbang now as I finish off this melon. But there is a chance that I will be able to change my flight for a few weeks later and get to travel around in Asia for like two weeks. Travel around in China after my job here is done because as you guys have seen, I haven't been able to vlog very frequently at all because I have zero time to and when I'm at work all day I'm not allowed to vlog so especially at the location we're at right now but I, I want to be vlogging every day and, and when I go travel full-time you know I'll be daily vlogging for you guys every day that's a part of the deal um, here while I'm working I can't do it so I want to try to be able to stay in China for a few weeks and get to just fully travel in China and daily vlog so if I get to do that uh, where should I go give me some recommendations should I go to Shanghai should I go to Beijing should I go to some other small town that I don't even know of that you've been to that's really awesome let me know in the comments if you know China if you live in China where should I go and visit if I'm able to go travel for a few weeks okay uh, much love everybody, Dream Extreme. Hope you've enjoyed this mukbang. Uh, if you did, remember to subscribe to my channel for more videos, give it a thumbs up, all the good stuff. Give me some love, give me those recommendations down below and check the links in the description box. You know, the way that I'm able to travel as I will be doing in these next few months, maybe years, who knows, is because I'm supported by you all. 
uh, who watch my videos, who pledge a buck a month, two bucks a month on my Patreon page so that I'm able to uh, make a living. It's very hard to make a living off YouTube, um, especially, I'm sure you've heard other YouTubers talk about the weird YouTube algorithm stuff, um, making it harder to make money through views. I'm not complaining about it. I know you guys uh, support me and love what I'm doing and that it's all gonna work, but yeah, just check the uh, links in the description box below uh, for more ways to watch more videos of me that I post on Patreon, which I am doing while I'm here in China, um, and so on. So I love you all, have a great day, uh, go eat some watermelon, peace out.